Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimlich's History. Now, we've been going through Unit 9 of the AP World History Curriculum, and this unit is all about the causes of globalization and its effects. So in this video, we're going to look at how culture itself became globalized after 1900, and baby, it's a juicy one. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked Bob Marley style, then let's get to it. So here's what we're trying to do in this video. Explain how and why globalization changed culture over time. So when the 20th century opened, the world nations were basically in competition with each other. So, you know, imperial and two world wars and the Cold War. That's enough to prove my point there. But after World War II was over, and especially after the Cold War ended, this global competition gave way to a more cooperative effort in the world. And the effects of that global cooperation were some serious political and social changes. Politically, the world grew more cooperative through organizations like the United Nations, the European Union, the World Trade Organization, which are just a few among many. The point is, many of these regional and global cooperative organizations created a new political reality compared to what existed at the turn of the century. But that's all I really have to say about global politics. Let's talk about global culture. Now, as you know, the 20th century carried with it a metric buttload of social change. Human rights movements were occurring all over the world, from the civil rights movement aimed at gaining equality for black people in the United States, to the nonviolent resistance of Mahatma Gandhi in India, to women's rights and their codification in the UN's International Bill of Rights for Women. And many of these changes were reflected in the artistic endeavors of the time. Pablo Picasso reflected these changes through a form of art known as Cubism, which challenged the traditional traditional norms of painting and composition. Also, you had the Harlem Renaissance in the United States. Harlem, New York was the place which many black Southerners had migrated to escape the oppressive structures of the American South. And when they arrived, they produced a prodigious body of work in poetry and literature and music, including a new form called jazz, which relied more on free-form improvisation than the strict constructions of traditional music. Now, it was the rise of new communication technologies like the radio and movies and later television and the internet that allowed culture to become truly global. Additionally, International airlines and high-speed trains made it easy for people to travel back and forth around the globe with speeds unheard of throughout the previous span of world history. And one of the main consequences of these technologies was the globalization of culture. What do you say we start with music? Now, in the 20th century, reggae became a global kind of music. It originated in Jamaica and was a kind of fusion between American jazz and mento, which is similar to calypso music. And thanks to the music of Bob Marley, reggae soon spread around the world and was embraced by many. But let's not forget about the recent rise of K-pop pop, which is a Korean pop music that is also spread throughout the world. And I'm saying that like you don't know what it is, but you know what it is. I don't because I'm a 40-year-old bald man. But, you know, the point is, through music like reggae and K-pop, both Pan-African and Korean cultures are being exported to the wider world. Movies also became a mainstay of global culture, and the two most significant examples are Hollywood and Bollywood. Hollywood is the American powerhouse of movie production, and throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, American movies have had an oversized international influence. Case in point, the top 10 highest grossing films of all time were made in Hollywood. And why is that important? Well, it's important because with the far-reaching global influence of these films, American culture is finding its way into cultures all over the world, and that is not a neutral phenomenon. American values are freighted in with those stories and can have influence in places that otherwise are unavailable to cultural influence. And the name for this is Americanization, and it means that American culture has been exported throughout the world and has had significant influence. But India has also had a significant international influence through Bollywood films which come out of Mumbai. It's a style of film most known for its bright colors and musical numbers, and while they are not as popular as American films, Bollywood movies have spread throughout the world nonetheless, carrying their own cultural influences. Also important to the rise of global culture is the advent of social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter from the United States and WeChat from China. These platforms allow users to share their thoughts and ideas and lives globally in an instant. Like, the level of cultural diffusion that can occur at rapid speed through these platforms would have made Silk Road merchants poop their pants. AP World History Change and Continuity Joke. Nailed it. Also in the vein of globalized cultures, sports have played a big role too, especially the Olympics and the World Cup. Recall that the modern Olympics were established in 1896, and from its inception, it was a competition that drew international attention. In fact, the last Olympic Games in 2016 was viewed by about half the world's population. Like, think of that. 3.6 billion people watching the exact same thing at the exact same time. It's insane. The World Cup for soccer has had a similar worldwide influence. Since soccer is the world's most popular sport, 3.5 billion people 
tuned in to watch it in 2018. And that's just a million people shy of how many people tuned in to watch the Olympics. So sports have a way of drawing the world's collective attention in a way that few other events can. And yet another result of this globalized culture is the rise of global consumerism. Thanks to global brands like Nike, Coca-Cola, and Apple, people from all over the world are wearing the same shoes, drinking the same fizzy brown sugar water, and clicking away on the same computers. And this rise of global consumerism was in no small part facilitated by the rise of online shopping giants like Amazon.com based in the United States and Alibaba based in China. Now people from all over the world can shop from their cell phones or the computers thanks to shipping via air and freight ships carrying massive shipping containers. All of those products will then show up on your doorstep within a matter of a couple of days, which would also have made the Silk Road traders poop their pants. So the point of all of this is that new communication and transportation technologies created the occasion for people to diffuse their culture throughout the world at high speed through cultural artifacts like films and music, and by means of trade through exported goods brought all over the world. Well, all right, that's what you need to know about Unit 9, Topic 6 of the AP World History Curriculum. If you need help getting an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May, then click right here and grab a view packet. If this video helped you and you want me to keep making them, then by all means, subscribe, and I shall oblige Heimler out.